Go know, ahead, boy. First of all, I've always known I was going. I felt like I needed to be on a stage. I always knew that to some degree. In eighth grade, I did a um, a uh, like a, a talent show thing mm-hmm. with uh, this dude named Kenny Hobbs and Noel. Shout out, um, may Noel rest in peace. But he, uh, but I remember doing it and feeling kind of like. I felt a little jitters and I did it, but then I never kind of went back for whatever reason. Life happened and and then the anxiety crept up. Mm. But I always knew it. I always, I'm like, man, I want to be on the stage, right? Uh, and then every time I told, I've told you this, I would go on the concerts, I would go to Drake, and instead of really being enamored with the performance, I was more enamored with the fact that there was a performance, not necessarily the person. Like, I'm in like, I'm looking at the crowd and I'm looking at the light show and as opposed to the, 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 the artist, right? You're not, you're not caught up in the fandom. You're more so in the production of yeah. what's going on. Even yeah. even the other day, which we get into, I was like looking at the production of the whole situation. Yeah. So I always knew that. And then me and you sat down. <laughs> yeah. And I think we might have been at Rob's at the time, where wherever we were. Yeah. We were both like, man, you should just go all in with speaking. Yeah. We were you at my crib, that? I think. We were at my crib, yep. And I just remember saying, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And, and remember, I was going to try to be a stand-up comic. Which is, again, being a speaker. Yeah. But there was fear in that. But then I didn't really, being the funny thing, I like being silly, but I don't know if I, if I genuinely love writing jokes. Right? I like just being a silly human being in general. So anyways, uh, we went all in on that, and I just started putting myself in situations that I could do it. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and here's the thing, D, Tom. It comes, it comes in very natural. I believe it. Yeah. I, I mean, you're a talkative guy. You want to say some shit. <laughs> All you needed was a stage to have your stage presence met. Mm. A lot of people have. <laughs> Dropping bars early. I know. <laughs> right. We get to it. Damn. No, but you know, there's so many people that are that are meant for a stage. It's just that there are different stages in this world. I was I, one of the people I admire who I've always admired my whole life is Snoop. Mm. And I just look at him now as a veteran stage performer. And it's like, it don't matter if it's at a, a damn circus. Like, he's on his stage, on a platform, so he's used to this vantage point. And I think people like you, you are comfortable with that vantage point of being on a platform and then speaking to a crowd. It's the same thing as an orator over a fire telling a once upon a time, right. it was a dark and stormy yeah. night. Just your own version of it, bro. And you've been, like, developing that muscle over the past couple months, and we got to the schools, we get to mm. events, like, bravo. But, but it's weird because there's... It's, I've always knew I was supposed to be on a stage, but then I was like terrified of being on a stage. Where It's kind of weird. I was but it's terrified. it's funny you mentioned that your anxiety kind of kicked in during a time in your life where your stage presence was, you saw it, but it wasn't continued maybe because of that. Right. Yeah, it and, crept in. And then I would say that the going on social media was a start to just be used to being seen. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I agree. So, I but, agree. but digitally is very different from digitally. in person. Right. So like, you know, I've been viewed a bunch of times now, but I haven't necessarily been viewed a bunch of times face to face. And that energy is different. I, talking to 100 people is a lot more energy intense than 10 million views. Mm-hmm. And I know this for a fact. So it's like, but, that, but like you said, I had to address that muscle or kind of exercise that muscle. And, then, and here's the thing We didn't realize this and I think you and I Figured this out I went to school For mass communication yeah, You didn't even remember that, that. It yeah. was like I was always supposed To communicate But I love that type of shit Chris Because it tells your story Without you even having to Really try too hard It's like no I was always this person Who wanted to be a mass communicator mm-hmm. didn't even realize <laughs> Literally in the title <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying So you just You just I, I always tell you bro All of this shit That you've done Is created it Separately, but it's all meant for one pot. It's all telling your exact story. So when you talk to these people, yes, mass communications is what I'm about. Mm. You know what I mean? It's what I've been about. So now, nah, man, you're on the right path. And, and and then so because I've just a curious mind and, and then now and because social media, I think social media is such a good tool. If you look at it, right, if you change the way you look at things, the, the things, things you look, look at, at change. change. A lot of people will look at social media and say it's a big shit show and it sucks and da, 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 da. But that's just not the way I view it. Are there aspects that suck? Yes. But there's a lot of aspects of it that I've learned a lot. And it's put me in a lot of different directions of people, of different people who've taught me different things. So even my social media feeds, don't get me wrong, I'd be bullshitting on there too. But a lot of the bullshit and sometimes it's still me getting some type of knowledge. Like for instance, there's this dude named um, Vin. He's a, he's a 
He's a speaker and master communicator. And I've learned so much through him. Not necessarily that I, did, I wasn't doing it, but I now know why I was doing it. So, for instance, when you're communicating to someone, the silence is, is one of the biggest tools that most people are afraid to use. And it's one of the most powerful things you can use in communicating. Right. And most people feel like they need to fill the space, especially if you want to talk about even in relationships, like if a guy and a girl at a bar and they're having a, 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 a conversation, nine times out of 10, the guy feels like he can't make it be silent. He has to fill that space or else the girl won't think that I'm worthy of a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. and the weird paradox of, and, and I've learned this is if you're okay in that silence, that actually improves that person's energy towards you because now they almost have to feel it's like, it's, it's almost, an anticipatory. It's a yeah. And it's anticipatory and it's, it's a confidence thing. Right. So like now when I'm, when I, so if I got the mic in my hand, I'm on stage, the old me and a lot of people would be so worried about if, if I'm not up here giving value every single second <laughs> of the, of the whatever Speech. time frame, then you suck. Mm -hmm. And that's just not the truth. There's a few reasons why you want to pause. One, you want to pause after you say something to give people time to process what you just said. I just did it there. Whereas if I'm talking like this and you, I need to give you time to process what we're talking about so that we can talk about the next topic, I'm not even giving you a time to think about it. Right, I'm trying to catch up with what the next right. word was, right? Right, so then you slow down and, and then it gives you time to gather your thoughts. <laughs> it's like a secret weapon. If you're just trying to fill the space and, and, and you're not willing to pause, you can get stumbled over your words very easy. Pause. Yeah, pause. <laughs> hey, yo. So, and so that's like another thing that I've learned from social media. Uh, and another thing is this thing called uh, vocal variation. Being able to move your voice up, down, faster, slower, in order to create almost like this artwork, which, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Speaking, man. So sometimes, so if I can do something like this and we can get really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. And then you can lower your voice, you slow it down, and all of a sudden what you just said was more powerful. But then if you speed it up and you talk a little bit higher, then all of a sudden it could be a little bit more light. So you use these pauses in certain points of what you're saying to really wow, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. to really get their ass. It's grabbing storytelling attention. And I realize, I'm like, oh, I kind of do that just in natural conversation. And yeah. I didn't realize that this was a, a thing that you can like learn to do. And now I'm a little bit more cautious of it. But when I look back, I'm like, I've always spoke like this. You know what it is? It's people that are studying people do people shit. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like that. All you got to do is just kind of, I think what your process is right now, you're recognizing social media is helping you recognize these natural processes that you've already been a part of. And now you're able to put those into a physical formatted stage mm -hmm. and then use that. Because honestly, Chris, you talk with conviction. Mm. So that's the reason the tonalities are going to change, shift, slow mm -hmm. down, speed up, because it's convicted talk. You know what I mean? When you're speaking like a natural person and you mean it. Right, right. That's exactly what's going to come out. You know? So that's and why it also, feels natural to you. And also feeling like what you have is worth saying. Right? A lot of times when you're trying to convince someone, it ain't even necessarily that you believe what the fuck they're talking about. It's almost like you you like the fact that they believe what they're talking yeah. about. So just if, if I speak with conviction... And I can look you in your eye and I'm telling you and hit, to kind of backtrack. What's so powerful about what I say specifically in my speeches. And I think why it works is because without the things I'm saying in my speech, I wouldn't have even been up here to give the speech. Mm -hmm. So, and I can say that up here. I'm like, you guys, I'm telling you for a fact, these are the things that I did to get to the part where I'm even here talking to you in this situation. Mm -hmm. So and because I believe it, because to me, in my anecdotal evidence, it is true. Somebody going to get that. Now, not everyone's going to get it. And I'm actually getting much better with that. I'm not trying. I, if, I, if I can't get you, I can't get you. Even though I'll I be wanting to get them. <laughs> I, I, I wanna, oh, I wanna, all 8 billion of y'all oh, motherfuckers. 